Hey guys, welcome back to the Kool Aid Podcast. Welcome back to another video. On today's video, we're going to be talking about Pep Guardiola's quote regarding Xavi, and then we'll also be talking about some fallout uh, about yesterday's match against Real Madrid. It wasn't the best of results, guys, and honestly, I don't want to be talking about Barcelona whatsoever. That's how down I'm feeling. But um, of course, I'm coming and uh, I'm making sure I bring you guys the best content that I can. But guys, before I get started on the video, make sure to follow me on all of my social media platforms. Everything is posted down below in the description. Make sure to go check me out over there. That way you guys can stay up to date with everything that I do on the channel. But guys, let's get straight into the video and let's talk about Pep Guardiola. Now, guys, if you guys don't know, Pep Guardiola, he has just won the best FIFA men's uh, coach of 2023. Congrats to Pep Guardiola. Uh, Messi, he actually won the best uh, players award, the FIFA uh, men's player award of 2023. Congrats to Messi as well. And in, you know, Pep's you know, congratulations speech or something like that. He did mention Barcelona and Xavi as well. Uh, and let's look at the quotes. Uh, Guardiola, Barcelona is the club of my heart. Barcelona is the reason why I'm standing here. Barcelona is part of my life. Now, this is, we, we all know this, you know, Pep Guardiola, he is Barcelona. Pep Guardiola is Barcelona. Uh, and Barcelona is Pep Guardiola. It's such a shame that Pep Guardiola had to leave Barcelona because we basically ruined what would have been the most successful period of any, you know, like sporting team in history. The dominance that Barcelona would have had with with Pep Guardiola and Messi and with that team for, I would say, you know, a decade would have been unprecedented in, in the history of any sport. And it's cut short uh, due to some, you know, issues with the media and everything like that. But, you know, it, it makes me reminiscent of, of those times where Barcelona would basically coast through games and and basically won't be one of the best and no just simply be the best in the world uh but let's continue on and let's see pep guardiola's quotes pep guardiola i want to give xavi my support it's easy to blame the coach but the players must step up no secret they're the ones playing it's not the, just the coach's fault we know this job only lasted five years the players need to step up okay so pep, pep guardiola is coming in support of, is coming out in support of Xavi. He is saying that you know not all the blame lies on Xavi's doorstep. The players are as fault as well, and I agree in 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 this sense. You know, I I don't disagree that just you know that Xavi is um, fully to blame. I also think that the board is partially to blame. I think that the players are also to blame. I think everyone is to, bl is to blame for the situation that we are seeing on the pitch right now at Barcelona. It's just not. It's not just one person. Or one individual and Pepe Guardiola he's coming out here he's trying to give his support to a friend and this is this is good I, I understand that some people are, are not fans of Xavi but we do have to understand that we have we're still in three other competitions left to be played the Champions League La Liga and the Copa del Rey these are three competitions in which if we improve we can definitely go at it but of course this is just like op optimism um, I'm not saying that Barcelona will actually do this because the way Barcelona is playing, it looks like we're going trophyless. But um, Pepe Guardiola, he is coming out in support of Xavi in order to give him morale for what's to come. Continuing on with the quotes, Pep Guardiola, Xavi, I want to give Xavi my support. It is the Barca players who must take a step forward. Just a continuation from the from the previous quote. Uh, and funny enough, actually, it's not just uh, Pep Guardiola who's in support of Xavi. Uh, the main person uh, in the whole Barcelona, the president, is has also uh, come out in support of Xavi. Joan Laporta has confidence in Xavi. The club's board believes that no drastic de decision should be made. The president and the board of directors continue to trust the coach despite the loss in the Supercopa final. Now, uh, guys, I, later tonight we're going to be having you know the episode... Uh, where with Alex Alvaro and Sebi, where we talk about uh, the ramifications and the fallout of yesterday's game in a little bit more detail, and we actually dive in deep and go into the detail. But I don't know. I I understand why John Laporta is coming out saying, "Hey, he has confidence in Xavi," but I'm sorry, Me measures and ramifications need to be in place um, and taken because of that result yesterday. John Laporta in 2021. 
um, came out saying that in 2022, I believe, came out saying that lo if losing has consequences, Xavi has been giving mediocre results and performances for the past five months, something like that. And on top of that, we lose to Real Madrid in an embarrassing fashion. This is not just sort of one game. It's not two, not three, not four, not five. These are months and months where Barcelona have been regressing and getting worse. I, I understand that it, I, as the president, you want to put faith in your coach, but if the coach is no longer bringing results, then at what point do you say in, is enough is enough? Uh, but guys, we will be talking about that more detail later tonight in, in, in the episode, so make sure to tune in for that. But it's interesting to see that John Laporta has confidence in Xavi, which I don't know if that's the best option to do. And regarding Xavi personally, how does he feel about the whole situation? Well, Xavi feels like he is able to change the situation. He received the management support in the last hours. Xavi is aware that the season is still long and the team is still competing in three tournaments. This is correct. What Barcelona need, need to do right now, looking at the short term, is to try to put this behind us. Analyze it in detail. Take a moment of reflection. Be absolutely self-critical and be honest with yourself barcelona have not been good whatsoever in these past couple of months you have to understand that and you have to start from zero you have to start from zero if 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 it takes for you to just rip up the entire blueprint and just start from from scratch barcelona have to do that um because if we are continuing in this pattern guys there's a serious possibility that by i would say uh april may we, we, we'd be out of the top four, we're out of the Champions League, we're out of the Copa del Rey with zero trophies and with more humiliations uh, under our belt. That's something that we cannot cannot afford. But um, it's interesting to see that, that Xavi won, um, has faith in himself. Um, and regarding some follow-up between yesterday's games, uh, this is reported by Javi Miguel. At halftime, despite the bad half, the squad found Xavi with little desire to talk offering the right slogans, spurring his team on, and asking for a little bit more commitment. The players expected a version very similar to that of Xavi in the other media, but it was different. And if you guys if you guys don't know, in that halftime talk in the media, Xavi came out furious and was basically, yeah, he came out furious and screaming at the players. He, Xavi was angry. And in this moment, the players found Xavi defeated. And I asked the question, has Xavi potentially lost the dressing room? Has Xavi reached to the point where the players are not able to understand his message or, or have just given up, uh, have thrown it in the towel? That, that is something that we do have to have to keep in mind. And as a, as a coach, as soon as you lose the dressing room, that's it. Game is over. So we're going to have to see the reaction from Barcelona in these next couple of weeks in order to see how this team is going to respond uh, to what is to come. And continuing on uh, with the quotes, uh, Xavi wants the club to sign someone in the midfield, but he knows that with the current situation, it's not going to happen. He has a, sh uh, a short squad that is plagued by injuries, some of them long-lasting like Gabi. Gabi's a huge miss. He, he would have been absolutely phenomenal yesterday. For this reason, he explored with the sports management the possibility of incorporating a midfielder to make up for the lack of intensity. Barcelona... In the past couple of weeks, they just haven't been showing intensity, effort, and hunger. And that's something that's been missing in our game. And this is something that as soon as Xavi came in, he, this was his basically his, his slogan saying, hey, at Barcelona, we are going to work hard. We are going to put intensity. And that's the bare minimum in which a team should, should be given. And, that's, and this Barcelona team is not giving us that. And I understand that we are short in some personnel. But Xavi should be doing much better with the squad that he's having. And then other coaches, you know, they're in the same exact situation where they also have long-term injuries. Look at Real Madrid. Real Madrid, they have no number nine. I understand that they spent money on Jude Bellingham. But also they have Edermi Letao and Thibaut Courtois out with injury. They also deal with injuries. And look how Car Carlo Ancelotti is getting the best out of those players, maximizing their strengths and trying to cover up the weaknesses what xavi is doing is the complete opposite he's exposing barcelona's weaknesses for everyone to see and regarding the midfielder i 
don't know who's going to be coming in just because Barcelona they currently they do not have the FFP margin in order to to bring someone in. And this comment is actually funny. I honestly agree with a big sacrifice in any position. Sell a star for big money to finance the signing of an essential of an, of an essential DM signing. And guys, I bet I ask you the question: Who is going to be that sacrifice? Is it going to be Frankie De Jong? Is it going to be Christensen? Is it going to be Araujo? Is it going to be Pedri? Is it going to be Gavi? Is it going to be Balde? Lots of questions to ask. And lastly, guys, I want to be talking about this uh, uh, call that suffered from Ferran Torres regarding the game last uh, yesterday. Ferran Torres on Vin um, Nishes yesterday from the bench. If he says anything to me, I swear to God, I'll give him a fucking punch. If this asshole says anything to me, I'll give him such a fucking blow to his face that I'll smash him. This is reported by Movie Star Football. And guys, if you guys don't know my opinion on Vinicius, he's a good player, good player, one of the best wingers in the world. But as a person and as a sportsman, he's absolutely despicable. I think I, I, he's such an unlikable character. Honestly, I don't like Vinicius at all. Um, I don't wish him success of any kind. Obviously, you, I'm not going to wish him harm because you don't want to wish harm on any other human being. But I do not want to see. Vinicius succeed at Real Madrid whatsoever. It's that plain and simple. Uh, Vinny as a person is horrible. And uh, just just look at at this uh, moment of play. And guys, I've also seen some people say like, hey, when PK does that, it's completely different. Um, and to, to, in response to that, PK was showing five when Barcelona beat Real Madrid 5-0 in the Camp Nou. He, PK was showing that to the Camp Nou crowd. He wasn't showing that to the Real Madrid bench. He wasn't doing that. And on top of that, you know, PK, he doesn't come out in the media and, and starts crying and play the victim card. That PK, PK does not do that. PK, he actually likes um, the attention. PK likes um, the, the Madrid media going at him. It, it, it's like that. PK doesn't cry about it. Vinicius does. And then when he is like this, when he is taunting the opponent, um, he, he cries about it later and, uh, and, and, and uses the, the racism card. But um, regarding Vinicius, I do not respect him as a person whatsoever. Uh, as a footballer, I understand that he's very skilled at the game. But honestly, that that, that performance uh, yesterday just just sealed the deal for me regarding Vinicius. Uh, but guys, thank you guys all for watching. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, today was a little bit of, of just you know discussing uh, some of the fallout um, very quickly um, of yesterday's game. And tomorrow, and, and, no, actually not tomorrow. Later tonight, we're gonna be talking and. Uh, in detail and for a longer period of time uh, regarding the follow-up of Barcelona. Where do Barcelona go from here? Uh, but guys, thank you guys all for watching. Thank you guys for tuning into the video. And as always, guys, remember, like, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.